I have been wanting to turn pepper mills for years and just one more of those things I just haven't got around to yet and I have to admit I was inspired by Mike Walt he recently did a video where he turned a pepper mill and he used this same antique pepper mill kit that I have although I did not get mine from the same source and he did such a good job made it look so easy thought I'd give it a try of course Mike always makes things look easy now I started by finding the center on all four ends of these two blanks using the center finder and this in case you don't know how is how I did that I want to find the center of this blank using this center finder fairly typical thing you find in most shops it's got two arms that go on each side of the blank then you can draw a line across here and do the same around the other four sides one thing to keep in mind you should always pick one of those arms as the reference side put it flat against the side you're starting with then slide it up until the other arm touches that way if this is not perfectly square it will be the same all the way around so I simply draw a line do the same thing on the next corner all four sides and because this is not perfectly square I end up with two lines and now what I have to do is take my scratch all and split the difference get right between those two lines and there I have my center found and I'll do that on the other end of this one and both ends of the other blank all right now that I have the centers found on these blanks what I want to do is draw two lines at 90 degrees so the first thing I'm going to do is just draw a line across here right on the dimple I made with the scratch all and that what I want to do is take this protractor laid across that line and then mark out and draw a line at 90 degrees but as you can see this is too small so to take care of that I'm just going to take this other blank clamp it against it doesn't have to be perfect just needs to hold that protractor and I can take the protractor set it right on that line and right on the center and mark my 90 degrees right there and then I can draw a line from that to that dot right across here okay so I'll do that with this one and I'll be right back Now that I have the lines across here, I need to take my compass and draw a one and three quarter inch circle. So I've set it to half of that, which is seven eighths of an inch. I'll just put it right on the center and draw these circles on one end of each of these blanks. Now that I have the circles drawn, I'm going to use a 5 16 inch Forstner bit to drill a hole a quarter of an inch deep at each of the four intersections of the circle with those 90 degree cross lines that I put on there. Now Mike did this with a jig on his lathe and I don't have that jig, haven't made one yet. On my list things to get to. So I'm going to do this at the drill press. So let's go over and drill these. This is exactly a quarter of an inch. So if I drill down to where that shoulder is on top here, it should be perfect. Up 
I drew a line one quarter of an inch from the top of this blank so I would be able to tell when this inch and three quarter bit was going to be at that depth. Lock the drill press so that it will only come down that far. And now I need to drill a hole one quarter of an inch deep on the center with this inch and three quarter bit. All right. Now I need to exchange this for a one inch bit and drill all the way down through this. Because this bit won't go all the way through, it's just not long enough, I am going to turn this over and come in from the other end. I also am doing this because I will make sure that it is centered on the bottom. That bit may tend to drift as it's going through if I put an extension on here. There's a very good chance that if these holes don't line up perfectly, and I'll be surprised if they do, when that goes down to meet the other hole, it could grab. And I could put a glove on and possibly hold it, but I've put a hand clamp around here instead, just for a little bit of safety. Let's see how this goes now. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised. I don't know if that'll show up, but the hole went through very straight. Now to clean up inside this hole, just to make sure there aren't any little chips or shavings that are going to want to come out with the pepper or salt, just wrapped a sheet of 120 grit sandpaper around a three quarter inch dowel. And I'll just work it in and out of there a few times making sure that I get it nice and smooth inside. Not quite enough, but I'll be back after I finish doing this. Now, if you happen to have already seen Mike's video when he did his pepper mill, you might realize already that I'm not following the same technique. And the reason for that is I like to always show if there's another way, some option. So the way I'm doing it is different, and I hope uh, you'll stick around and watch that. And one of the things I had to decide on was just what size I want this to be. And I realized something fits my hands perfectly, a can of Coke. So I used my calipers here to check the size, comes out to two and nine sixteenths of an inch. So I think that's what I'll stick with. And now let's go over to the lathe and start working on this. In order to drive these blanks, I've turned a one inch pin on this piece of wood. And I've made a one and three quarter inch piece here with a shoulder on it. So this will fit inside here. This shoulder will drive it. And I've made it snug enough that it actually polished the inside of this hole as I was putting it on. I'm not upset about that at all. Also, on my live center, I've got the cone, so I can put that in there to hold it. And that should be tight enough. It'll be a bit like a safety drive in that if I get a catch, it will spin on there. 
So let me get the tool rest prepared and I'll start turning this. I'll be turning at 2000 RPM. The first thing I want to do is just turn this down to a cylinder. Found this was sticking a little bit trying to slide it across here, so I put some paste wax on both the tool rest and on the gouge. Let's see if that helps. What a beautiful difference that can make. I want to turn this down to two and three quarters of an inch. All right, I'm at two and three quarters of an inch all the way across. I want to be at two and nine sixteenths in the center with a bit of a taper. First, I want to straighten out this end. All right, I'm just going to turn the speed down and just sand this end, and then I'll be back. All right, I have this end sanded to 400 grit, and I was just thinking, I wonder if that's too fine. It may not want to hold on there when I'm driving it, but if it does spin on there or rough it up somehow, I can always sand it off the lathe later. Now I want to bring the tailstock in, and I just want to sand this. This end is pretty nice and flat as it is. So I'll sand this, and then I'll be back. I have drawn a circle on the center from end to end, and I'm going to turn that down with my parting tool to two and nine sixteenths of an inch, or at least approximately that. That's not very much, but I just want to have a little bit of a taper here. Not very much, just a little bit. I've also marked a quarter of an inch from each end. I'm going to leave that flat, partly because I don't want to get near the edge and take a chance on chipping that up. I will eventually just round those corners over with sandpaper very gently. Now my parting tool is slightly thicker pardon me, thinner than what my calipers are that I'm going to test it with. So I'm going to be cutting in with the parting tool and rocking it a little bit side to side just to open it up. I'm turning this at 500 RPM.
All right, that's almost perfect. So I guess that'll have to do. Now I'm just going to use my spindle gouge to gently taper this from both ends. I will be turning this at 2000 RPM using my 3 8 inch spindle gouge. All right, I guess the rest of it, I'm just going to do with sandpaper. All right, I have it sanded to 400 grit, which is plenty, I believe. I'm going to use my Zinsser Seal Coat and Ethanol 50-50 mixture as a sanding sealer. start by just getting this piece of shop towel wet, wiping around the top here, and put it back on. I've got this turned down to 100 RPM, should be plenty, just to do the bottom and the outside. dry for 10 minutes and I'm going to sand it with probably about 800 grit. I'm using Minwax Wipe-On Poly. I did not have 800 grit sandpaper to use so I used 1000. I think that should be just fine. Well, I'm happy with these. I think these look great. Now, as long as she who must be obeyed thinks they look great, everything's good. All I have left to do now is just put these screws in to hold them down. And then I'm going to turn a couple of little plates to go underneath these, just to catch the pepper and salt flakes. All right, so I'll put these screws in. And then I'll go over to the lathe and start turning those plates for these. I've marked the center and I want a four inch disc. So I'm just going to measure over two inches. All right, now I should be able to trim it off to that.
I want the inside of the bowl to be two and three quarters of an inch. So I'll come over one and three eighths. And mark that. Now I'd be surprised if this shows up on the camera, but I put a mark across here, three eighths of an inch from the end. That's the depth I want to go in here to start with. I don't want it tight there at all. And I want to hollow it out just a little bit in the inside, just so any pepper might drift into the bottom, and also to clean this up. I'm using my quarter inch bowl gouge at 1000 RPM. And I'm going to come out 3 sixteenths of an inch from here. And what I want to do is start turning down from there and just make a bit of an OG shape of some kind. Maybe just a round over. All right, I'm using my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm going to have the flute closed so it's straight up and down across the flute and then as it starts to cut I'll open it up and start turning this. All right, it's subtle, but I do like that shape. All right, I'm just going to sand all of this, see what it looks like. Isopropyl alcohol helps break down hot glue. Doesn't take long. All right, I sanded it to 240 grit. Then I used Axe sanding abrasive paste followed by his polish restoring paste. And I'm very happy with that. I'll just get this glue off of there and carry on with it. All right, I've reversed it onto a jam chuck. Brought the tail stock up with the live center for a little support. I just want to clean up this edge. 3 8 inch bowl gouge, 1000 RPM.
All right, I'm just gonna sand this in place, and I'm gonna pull this back, and I'm gonna drill for my logo coin. All right, I finished the bottom the same way I finished the top. Now I'm just going to drill for my logo coin with this 15 16 inch Forstner bit at 250 RPM. That should be deep enough. That's going to be just fine. All right, now time for a little test. Pepper seemed to me should go in brown, so it's in the walnut. Nothing in the bottom there now. Let's give it a twist here a couple of times. Oh yeah, that's working well. I hope that shows up nicely. Now let's try the salt. Yes. All right, I don't think I'll get any complaints about how those are working. Oh, I'd say they're finished. Well, I'm happy with these, and I'm happy to say so is my wife. We have Christmas dinner at our house this year, so I think these will be a focal point on the table. I hope you enjoyed this, and I want to thank Mike for inspiring this. Mike always has some great ideas, and he's a much better turner than me. I know that because occasionally he'll comment on my videos and he'll say, that was really nice, Gord. Not as nice as if I would have done them, but really nice. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Mike's far too much of a gentleman to say that, no matter how true it is. So thank you, Mike. All kidding aside, I do appreciate the inspiration, finally motivating me to get off my butt and make these I've been meaning to for years. So thank you as well for showing up today. I hope you enjoyed this. And I'm amazed at how inspiring Mike must be because in the last week I have noticed an awful lot of these being made on YouTube videos. So again, thank you for stopping in. I hope you'll come back next time. Between now and then, have a great day in your shop and be safe. If you like this, tell your friends about it. Share it if you like. Don't forget to subscribe and take care. Bye-bye now.